You are listening to the Rewards Canada Podcast. Welcome to episode 74 of the Rewards Canada podcast. This is the final episode of 2020. And what can I say? 2020 is a year to remember. The coronavirus overtook our world and changed our everyday lives. But one thing it didn't change was the launch of the new Air Canada Aeroplan program. And it's my pleasure today to have two very special guests on this episode from Air Canada to close out the year for us. Let me welcome and introduce Mark Nasser, who's the Vice President of Loyalty and E-Commerce with Air Canada. And Derek Whitworth, who's the Senior Director of Loyalty Products. Gentlemen, hello, and thank you for coming on to the podcast. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Oh, go ahead, Derek. My apologies. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no. Thanks so much for having us. It's really a pleasure to be here with you today. Yeah, I'm really happy to have you guys finally on. I know we were talking about this probably for over a year, but I think the, the general consensus is like, let's wait until the new program's here because um, then we can kind of answer the questions properly and everything. So, so this is a really good thing. I'm sure our listeners will be really happy to hear what you guys have to tell us about the program. You know, it's been now a, a month, so let's, let's get into the nitty-gritty of it, as I do have some questions for you guys uh, about the new program. Uh, like I said, we're now one month into it. Has everything transpired as you guys have hoped with the launch of the new program? Do you feel a sense of relief that many years of work behind the scenes has culminated in this product? Uh, you know, just give us a general feel of what you guys are thinking. Uh, maybe I'll I'll start off of that, um, and then I'm sure Derek will want to share some of his thoughts as well. So first of all, um, thank you so much for having us on. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity. Um, you know, this has been a true labor of love over the course of the past couple of years, and um, you know, we're quite um, candidly we're we're thrilled with how the launch has transpired. You know, we made a commitment back in 2017 that there would be a smooth um, cutover to a new program. Um, and then we updated that commitment to say that the program would be better than the one it was replacing. And we would honor all Aeroplan miles in terms of points on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, and uh, we, we do believe that um, we've been able to deliver on those commitments. Um, the cutover itself took a few hours longer than we were hoping for. But by uh, Monday afternoon, we were uh, available and online um, with the full feature set. Uh, and since then, we've seen a pretty remarkable increase in digital traffic, in value that uh, members have been getting from the rewards redeemed, as well as in the number of rewards that are being redeemed. And those are kind of the key metrics that we were looking at. Maybe one final um, thought, which is on the call center. You know, call center is important for two reasons. Some customers prefer it. Um, so uh, you want to make sure your service quality is very good there. But also, um, if there are challenges, especially in the digital channels, they're going to manifest themselves in terms of increased call volume and longer calls to the contact center. And I can tell you now a month out, um, our uh, talk time that we are expecting, so kind of the average time of a call, uh, it's coming in uh, about uh, a quarter lower than we thought it would. Um, and our average hold times, um, even for general members, um, is around five minutes if you average the whole day. So, um, you know, we're we're quite happy with those service standards, um, you know, for a for a product that's so new. Well, wow, that's awesome. You know, five minute hold time, that's kind of unheard of these days, especially in the kind of airline or travel industry. Yeah, no, we, we, we think it's, it's good. I mean, you know, it's always uh, looking to get better. And, you know, there are certain times a day and days a week where it's higher than five. But, you know, overall for the week, the, the average member is experiencing five minutes. And, um, you know, uh, we'd certainly love to keep it uh, keep it in that range going forward. Maybe, um, maybe Patrick, I'll, I'll just comment on that, that notion of, of relief or sense of relief <laughs> yeah. program for a second too. You know, um, I, I think it, it was, it's been a really interesting process um, for us, you know, internally at Air Canada going through all of this, because obviously, you know, we've been through a lot of changes. We announced that, you know, we were going to separate from the Aeroplan program. You know, then we had the pleasure of getting together again with the Aeroplan program and, and you know, bringing together all that great expertise that the uh, the Aeroplan team had. Um, and I think that's led us to deliver an even better Aeroplan program than, than what we, uh, we might have been able to do by ourselves. So, 
Um, you know, just as it relates to a sense of relief, though, you know, it, it's been interesting also because we've spent years in this kind of echo chamber talking about the new program internally, all the, you know, all the work from a technology perspective, a process perspective, you know, working with our colleagues in operations. So I think we were all kind of wondering what was going to happen, both when we told customers about it, like we did back in August, and what was also going to happen when we flipped the switch in November. So, you know, I think for all the reasons that Mark uh, described, I think we uh, we, we have kind of breathed a bit of a sigh of relief, but uh, we're, we're certainly kind of looking forward and, and looking ahead at, at what's to come in 2021, because uh, I think as we might have alluded to when we spoke previously, we're, we're certainly not done yet. Yeah, that, that's awesome to hear. And yeah, for, I, know, I know my general takeaway, the new program looks amazing. Everything looks great. You know, we've written about quite a few of the, the products and, and changes to it and, and still have more coming. And it, I think in general, you guys have done a great job in totally revamping the program it just hasn't been i think the, what, what you guys mentioned back in august you know putting lipstick on a pig basically you guys have almost restarted the whole program which is great um you know and speaking of that you know uh, you've seen and we've seen what a lot of the points and miles blogs like ourselves and websites are thinking and hearing and even from our readers we ran the contest with you guys and we heard a lot about you know what excited our readers the most um, but how has the new program been delivering? Like, what have you heard from the customers? Like, have you seen an uptick in new membership? Like, has this new program generated the buzz you're hoping to? Um, yeah, just basically, if you want to let me know, what have you guys heard from the customers? Yeah, sure. So maybe I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, since we've relaunched, uh, membership signups are about 50% higher than they were in the period before the relaunch. Um, you know, and I think I mentioned this redemptions are up. Um, so a number of things are certainly pointing in the right direction. You know, that being said, uh, in general, uh, volumes are lower because of COVID. You know, a lot less people are flying Air Canada. Obviously, you know, in a, any given day, you know, last year we would have flown 150,000 to 200,000 people. And now we're flying, you know, uh, 12,000 to, you know, 16,000 people a day. So you can see, you know, obviously that makes a huge difference in people earning miles and a lot of customers sign up because they're going to take a flight, you know, while some customers, you know, less, less so sign up because they're going to uh, apply for a credit card or uh, take advantage of one of the other partnerships. Um, and in terms of, um, you know, feedback, the feedback has generally been very positive, but I will say, you know, Patrick, this was kind of part of your, your, your previous question. Um, we are, we, we strive to be our most uh, you know, our largest critics. And we, we still have a number of things we need to adjust in the program, you know, new rules, new products. There's still a number of features. In fact, I'd say almost half of the features have yet to launch in the new program. And it's a very, very exciting December and 2021 in terms of announcements uh, and launches yet to come. And so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you personally, um, I focus more on what's wrong and what we can be doing better um, then what's working, uh, and there's still a lot of opportunity to deliver more value. Yeah, that's great to hear. I mean, yeah, and I know we'll touch upon later in the podcast. I think some of the the things we're looking forward to that you guys are still going to release or or has been announced but isn't available yet. So we'll definitely touch upon those. Um, so next, I guess um, you know, again, I guess going back to the contest we had, we asked what people are most excited about. And I'd have to say. I didn't do a really technical survey, but I think the family membership seems to be one of the most popular things, at least from our reader's point of view. Um, what would you say uh, from your guys' side has been the most popular or favorite addition or change to the program for members? I Well, I, I maybe I can jump in and talk about maybe a couple of those things. I, I think first and foremost, I, I would say family sharing generated a lot of discussion. And, uh, and, and it's interesting because... You know, it, it's a it's a somewhat common program feature overseas with a lot of other loyalty programs. Maybe not so much in the airline space, but definitely not something that's very common uh, within North America. But it's it's really clear feedback that we got from customers as we were, you know, researching what what would really bring value with a with a refreshed Air Canada program. Um, so I would say that you know in in 
in the first, I guess, month now, we're, we're just over a month since launch, um, we've seen tens of thousands of members who have actually signed up uh, for family sharing pools, which, uh, which is really exciting to actually see people wanting to take advantage of it. Um, I can tell you it is a feature not without complexity to deliver. Um, so we're, we're definitely happy to see that people are using it because uh, it, it, it caused us a lot of heartache to, to make sure that uh, we, we had the right uh, quality experience for members when we cut over in November. Um, but I think as, as you would see if you visited, you know, any of the any of the bloggers, websites, you know, Flyer Talk, any of the other places where people are talking about the new Aero Plan, everything related to flight rewards is really where people um, are, are focused the most. Um, and I, I think that's kind of natural, just given the the, the focus on the burn side of, uh, of any given loyalty program. Um, so a lot of talk about the new features, how stopovers work, um, the removal of fuel surcharges systematically uh, on, on all Air Canada flights and the introduction of the, um, uh, of the partner airline fee uh, for, for partner airline tickets. Um, but also, you know, getting to that flight war more quickly by taking advantage of our new credit card products um, you know, I, I think uh, I think for a long time people were hoping for Aeroplan credit cards that did a better job of, you know, integrating more seamlessly with the elite experience, with uh, you know, and just more broadly within the Aeroplan program itself. Um, so I, I think we're really happy to bring that uh, bring that to bear in the marketplace. And I think to Mark's point around being our own toughest critics, we're, we're even right now kind of looking at the feedback that we're seeing from members and, and how we can improve upon things uh, with, with our uh, new Aeroplan credit card products uh, in, in, the, uh, in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, that actually brings me to my, my next question. I was going to say, we saw the revamping of the credit cards in the co-brand portfolio. Uh, a lot of great new benefits being added as standard features to the cards from, you know, first bag uh, free when you, when you check bags to the elite status point qualifications, stuff like everything. You, you, you guys kind of touched upon almost every part of the loyalty program you can think of through the various cards through the portfolio. Of course, the lower ones, less benefits, the higher up ones get the most benefits. Um, are we done with changes to the cards for the time being, or is there still more up your sleeve that we can expect in say 2021? Oh, there is still more up our sleeves, Patrick. Oh, um, and that's on the credit cards. I mean, not the program itself, but for the credit cards. Oh yes, yes, on both. On both, yeah, yes is the answer. Um, you know, it's like you know when they come to asking you, do you prefer chocolate cake or cheesecake for dessert? The answer, yes, uh, works as well. Um, <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll maybe give you some kind of broad strokes of it. Um, okay. On the on the card uh, side, um, maybe two things I'd focus on. Um, first of all, uh, you know, uh, special sign up offers, acquisition offers. Um, look for more from us in that space um, in the future. Um, you know, and I think part of it is actually net new offers, but another part of it is doing a, a better job of communicating the value proposition of the brand new Air Canada Buddy Pass, because it really is um, an amazing feature. You know, it's absolutely, um, I'm so sorry, that's my 18 no worries. <laughs> no worries. That, that's Nicola in the background. Um, the the, the, the uh, Buddy Pass is um, unprecedented. It's really, you take all of those restrictions and gotchas that people hate about loyalty programs, surcharges, blackout dates, inventory restrictions, and you throw all of that away completely, unreservedly, 100%. So uh, the, uh, you know, uh, BOGO, the kind of buy one, get one ticket um, buddy pass that we're offering on the card um, you know, it is free. You just pay the government taxes and airport fees, you know, that are mandated. They're not from Air Canada uh, and they're typically quite reasonable. Um, and you get a ticket, you get a second ticket in North America, including Hawaii and Mexico. And the reality is most people, they won't be using that, you know, on a Tuesday to go from Toronto to Montreal, you know, in September. Most people will be using that for March break. Uh, to Hawaii or for, you know, the summertime, Toronto, Vancouver or San Francisco or L.A., you know, those kinds of routes. We can already see in some of the initial bookings that we've had and the very early buddy passes that have been earned, um, members are getting amazing value. So we also need to do a little bit of a better job uh, talking about that product and communicating it. Um, and it's very, very different from what the other guys are offering. The other guys make you pay a fee. Uh, they have restrictions. There's surcharges. There's a number of other kind of gotchas and uh, gimmicks. Uh, you know, associated with that product there. Yeah, so you're uh, kind of referring to the standard companion pass that we see on a few other cards, or even your guys, some of your cards that have the the new companion pass as well. But we should note that that's 
over and above what this buddy pass is. It, it's a totally separate benefit to some of the Aeroplan cards. That, that's that's exactly right. The the buddy pass is kind of truly the real deal in terms of kind of best of breed. Um, and then, you know, the companion passes, which, you know, are a mainstay with our competitor and we offer as well. They're, they're a very different type of benefit. They're good, but they're, um, you know, certainly not uh, as rich or as beneficial or as flexible as the buddy pass is. Um, and then, you know, we, we will be introducing, um, you know, probably a few new features. If you think about uh, the period of COVID um, and you think about where flying volume is, um, there certainly is more opportunities of lead status on the credit cards. And so we've already, you know, some of that is part of the, uh, you know, the card you can earn status miles and you can roll over on our premium card. You can roll over any, um, you know, excess status miles each year along with your e-upgrades. But stay tuned for more to come on the ability of the cards to unlock status. Awesome. No, that's great to hear. We'll be excited to see those. Um, you know, I guess kind of same question for the entire program. You've already alluded to it. Uh, any hints on what we can expect coming in 2021 that's from the program itself and not on the cards? Sure thing. Um, so first and foremost, more, more partnerships, really exciting partnerships. On the air side, you might have seen we've now launched, I think it's four new air partners in the last, um, you know, six months or so. And there's more airline partners coming that will give members a greater breadth of flights and amazing products and cabins and destinations to redeem their points on. Also more uh, airlines to earn points on, um, you know, for travel. Then there's, you know, non-air partnerships. Um, so in the retail space, um, in the financial space, um, and in the travel space like car and hotel. Um, and uh, we're going to kind of fire on three cylinders there. Um, there's going to be an, you know, an earn proposition. So members can earn miles, uh, at more places for, uh, more activities. There's going to be a redemption proposition expanding where and how members can redeem miles and trying in particular to introduce higher value redemptions as part of that. And then finally, there's going to be a benefits side to it. So if you're an elite member and, or if you hold a co-brand card, maybe these partnerships can actually unlock benefits that you'll get from those merchants or from those hotels or those airlines or whatever have you. Um, and so we're going to actually make some announcements here in 2020. The year is not quite done. Uh, and then uh, we'll be implementing a number of them in the first quarter of 2021. That's awesome. That's great to hear. You know, always, always love to hear the things about providing more value for the customers. I mean, that's something we, we try to talk about, you know, maximizing value or value in itself. And, and you kind of alluded to this whole COVID situation is different right now. And people are finding value in different parts of programs. Uh, we've seen other loyalty programs kind of bump up value for cash or cash equivalents and other redemptions. So it's great to hear that you guys are kind of going that route too, but maybe it'll be something totally different. And if, and if it unlocks elite status too, and <laughs> you know, you guys can go so many ways. That, that's the beauty of, I think your guys' program is there's so many ways you can go with it and so many avenues that haven't really been explored or um, done by other companies. So, so we're, uh, you know, here, we here at rewards, rewards Canada are really excited to see them. I'm sure we'll, all of our listeners will be as well. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, actually, and now I, I sorry, I had one question. I want to go back to the credit card. So the the buddy pass, you know, we've talked about on the website, uh, showing huge value. So if our listeners haven't uh, learned about the buddy pass, we'll put a link on our podcast page to uh, showing the valuation. You can redeem it for up to a latitude fare, so you can get huge, huge value from it. Um, but my question to you guys was, do you feel this was the right time to offer it in the middle of a pandemic when travel has been severely curtailed? Now, I know we have, you have up to a year to, to book and then perhaps another year to travel. Um, but would you say this is more of testing the waters with it? Or do you feel this was like the full on, let's do it. Let's put out the buddy pass right now. Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. I think, I think it's a little bit of both, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the launch, the relaunch of Aeroplan was a huge task. And there's a number of regulations in Canada around advance notice on changes to credit cards and sometimes loyalty programs. And so, you know, one of the challenges that we had is we had to make the decision many months ahead of the launch when the launch would be. And then once we were within about three months, four months, it was a totally fixed date. We really can't change it because of the nature of the rules and, you know, making sure that we're giving customers sufficient heads up 
um, you know, and setting expectations clearly. So we, we very purposely, um, you know, relaunched a month ago with, I would say, minimal fanfare. We haven't purchased much media. We haven't done very aggressive promotions. Um, we've, we're careful because we want to make sure the program lands safely, that members understand it and are comfortable with it. And then certainly as we get into next year and the environment starts to change, you'll see our level of marketing and other tactics and promotions come into place um, you know, that, that, that correspond. Now, will we get it exactly right? Um, you know, will we hit the right tone and at the right timing, you know, for all of our members? I'm not sure that we'll be able to promise that. Um, but we are certainly thinking, you know, about this carefully. And, you know, we're very optimistic because it, I think earlier today, the first vaccine was approved in Canada. Um, you know, obviously, it's most important that the vaccine gets to the most vulnerable population. Um, you know, but um, based on the timelines that we can see and potential additional vaccines, um, you know, by the time we get into um, the second quarter of the year, um, you know, we're hopeful that it will be, uh, you know, appropriate and comfortable for the vast majority of Canadians to consider, um, you know, uh, engaging in travel again. Um, so, you know, hopefully the timing lines up uh, quite nicely here. That sounds good. Um, yeah. And speaking with that, that the current situation in travel, um, I'm assuming you guys have seen a big shift in where Aeroplan members are redeeming points for flights. I'm guessing it's probably largely domestic, but has there anything that really stood out in terms of uh, flight rewards? That's something that may have surprised you guys in terms of what people are redeeming for. Yeah, I, I, I guess what, what I would say is, yes, you, you can imagine there's, there's a, a, a shift towards domestic, uh, domestic travel, just given the fact that we're blessed to have such a big country to operate within. Um, so people want to take advantage of the fact that they can travel, uh, you know, to, you know, far flung places uh, without actually having to take out their passport. What I, what I will say that's been, I guess, especially interesting, but it kind of lines up to Mark's comment earlier around um, all of our new airline partners, um, especially a certain one that we announced a couple of months ago based in the Middle East. Uh, you know, people are very clearly dreaming and dreaming of the day uh, where they can take that passport out again and, and visit some very exotic destinations um, and take advantage of some of the new features that we're introducing with the new uh, with the new program. Um, so I, I think it's fair to say that as much as people are, are thinking about kind of practical travel that uh, that they can do in their their backyard just to kind of get out of the house and uh you know, visit, visit maybe somewhere that they haven't been before, or maybe it's kind of gone further down the list, given the fact that they've had the opportunity to travel overseas and that went higher up on the list. Um, I, I think people are still thinking about those really aspirational overseas destinations. And uh, I, I can tell you, I have personally seen a number of quite intricate itineraries that people have built. Um, for travel, you know, call it maybe the summer or the fall of next year, um, you know, across Asia, Africa, uh, and, and just more broadly internationally so that they can, you know, maybe, uh, maybe really get out of the house and really get out of Canada to, to visit some new places. So I think as much as you're seeing kind of the, the natural traffic patterns you might expect, uh, given everything that we've seen during the pandemic, I think there's no question that people are really trying to, you know, leverage Aeroplan and leverage their points to, uh, to dream and dream about what they can do uh, once, um, you know, once they have the opportunity to travel abroad again. Okay. Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry, Patrick. As oh, a, go one, ahead. One thing we certainly have seen um, is uh, much higher redemptions for the premium cabins, um, which is great to see. You know, we offer obviously, um, you know, the best premium experience in the country and, um, you know, a variety of choices to that end between premium economy and, and business class and signature class and all of that. Um, and we've seen a really significant increase um, in those that are choosing to use their miles for premium cabin. Maybe it's a little bit more space. Um, you know, maybe it's, um, maybe it's, uh, uh, you know, um, the fact that some folks are taking less trips and they want those trips to be a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more special. Um, but that's uh, been really good to see. Well, that's great. I was just going to ask, uh, so in terms of people dreaming, would you say then overall, there's more of a, uh, let's wait and see people are, are just earning their, their points right now and holding on to them. Um, versus, I, I know you said there's there is an increase in rewards, but it's not like the the numbers you would you like we would have seen in 2019. So is there a bit of a hoarding going on? Which I mean, we've discussed on our site too. It's like right now is not a bad time to to start thinking about that future travel and making sure you have enough points to do so. Yeah, it's exactly what you'd expect. Redemptions are up for merchandise and gift cards um, and those kinds of uh, non travel related redemption opportunities. 
and redemptions are down for airline tickets uh, and uh, cars and hotels, although to a much lesser extent on the car and hotel side. Um, so net net, uh, folks are definitely saving up more points um, than they did in the past. And, um, you know, to Derek's uh, comment earlier, we are seeing a number, you know, we have a, a very flexible change cancellation refund refund policy in place for Aeroplan right now. Um, and so we, we definitely do see members that are making prospective bookings uh, out for the second quarter, the third quarter, even the fourth quarter of next year. A lot of Australia trips being booked for the fourth quarter next year. Uh, so, you know, people are, are, I think, hoping, hopefully we'll be in the position, but of course, uh, they'll be able to cancel and, um, you know, get their points and, uh, taxes back, uh, if, uh, if the situation doesn't uh, pan out. Do you feel that the, the current Air Canada or Aeroplan refund policy will be extended beyond the end of the year? Yes, um, we will be extending the policy, uh, beyond the end of the year. Um, so we're going to, I think, I think maybe I'm breaking the news now, but the good thing is Derek's at home, so he can't kick me under the table. Um, we, we will be spending that. We'll also be announcing a number of other things to ensure that we continue to take care of members and, you know, be fully respectful and cognizant of the environment. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll compose an email early next year, but we'll make some of those uh, policy adjustments before the end of the year. Yeah, actually, I, I think, Mark, I, if you're okay, I, I can even confirm it because we're, we are going to slowly start to roll it out over the, the course of the next uh, next week or so. But as it relates to change in cancellation policy, it, it will extend. It will align with the current Air Canada policy um, running through to the end of uh, the end of February 2021. So still have the ability to to, to cancel any time um, and still have the ability to, to change um, uh, to change without restriction. Oh, that's awesome. You heard it you heard it here first, folks, on the Roars Camp podcast. They're gonna extend that Aeroplan uh refund policy that has been very popular and um you know talked about a lot across uh the internet that it is very generous and it does kind of let you go out and book flights and if you change your mind or if things aren't looking great for you, you can you can go and uh, refund your reward, you get all your miles back and all the taxes and fees will go right back to your credit cards. You're not out anything. Um, in terms of reward flights, uh, I wanted to ask, you know, I was playing around with the search engine and everything. Are you planning, I believe you may have mentioned this in August, but, um, if you want to confirm a calendar view for reward searches where we can see what the lowest price may be over a week or over a month, is that in the works? It is, it is absolutely in the works. I, I, if I can, if I can just go on a tangent for, for one moment, I think, um, I think you can, uh, I think you can imagine over the course of the past two years, as we were working on the design of the new program, there are a number of trade-offs that we had to make to, to make sure that we stayed, uh, you know, on track and, and on deliverable. Um, and I think, you know, Mark would not disagree with the comment to say that, you know, we, we did make some trade-offs and frankly, the calendar is a, is a good example of a trade-off that we made. Um, very fair to say though, that, uh, it is something that we are working on over the course of next year. We definitely expect to have kind of a, a an initial version of a refresh calendar, um, in, in the first quarter of next year. Um, a very active conversation internally. Mark was literally texting me about it yesterday. I was actually, I'm going to be on a call about it this afternoon. So uh, uh, if that, you know, doesn't give you confidence that there is uh, a focus even at the very tippity top of the Aeroplan uh, organization to get this out, um, I, I don't know what will. So just to say it is it is something we realize is a gap. Um, but the challenge with calendars and, you know, relatedly to flight rewards more broadly there's a lot of complexity to get that right. There's a lot of flight reward solutions that have to be, you know, uh, uh, identified, uh, validated, priced, um, and then looked across a number of different days. Um, and given the flexibility that we have in the new flight reward products, where it's not just looking at kind of the traditional, I think for the super users, they'll, they'll understand when I say X, I, and O. Um, given the fact that we brought a lot more to bear in the new flight reward search technology, um, it, it kind of makes the calendar a little bit more difficult to get to. Um, so that doesn't mean that we're not going to get there. It just means uh, that we want to make sure that we get it right um, so that we're not having a conversation about a crummy calendar experience uh, when we're actually ready to, to put something into market. So a, a very, uh, very active internal discussion right now. Oh, that's great to hear. We can't wait, can't wait to see it. Um, and I understand. Yeah, I mean, literally, you're talking tens of thousands of potential results to show up for over a month, probably even probably into the six figures in terms of results, in terms of possibilities across all your partners and and redemption options. Um, and I know the other one that a lot of people are 
excited for and waiting for are the stopovers. I know right now you can call in to uh, to book those. When do you think we'll be able to start booking those online? In in full transparency, this one is going to take a bit longer. Um, we expect to have a capability on uh, what we call internally uh, uh, complex itineraries because they are a little bit more complex to book. Um, probably sometime in the fall. Um, it's going to take us a little bit longer to get there. And, and again, to be honest, we've we've made some trade-offs to prioritize some things that we think will improve the member and, and frankly, as well, the agent experience at Air Canada. Um, but uh, our, our target is to have that capability online in the fall, um, such that customers can can really, you know, book a fulsome, uh, a fulsome, as I said, complex itinerary um, with, you know, I, I, as many stopovers as, uh, as we can potentially get onto, uh, onto a ticket they'd like to book. Awesome. So we're so probably about nine nine months away, ten months away, hopefully. Yeah, I would say so. And you know, again, this is uh, I may, maybe maybe another time we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll we'll tell the story of uh, of all the uh, the internal activities that have gone on to to get to to get to launch the program. But uh, another good example of one uh, we're we're actually on uh, in meetings with a couple of our technology vendors uh, right before Christmas and heading into the new year um, to work out exactly how do we actually get this online. Um, in a way that you know is intuitive to customers, uh, and uh, and actually you know delivers, I think delivers as much uh, as many results as as we can to to provide as much flexibility as possible. Awesome. And I know um, so earlier Mark had mentioned so you guys are seeing people redeem for Australia flights uh, far into next year, and I was going to ask you guys a question on that. Every time I've searched up Sydney, the pricing seems to be pretty crazy like pretty high are those prices we're seeing real like i know we can even book economy class but the the higher up classes were in there ranging uh, you know i think up to half a million or, or more points one way is this uh an anomaly or is this actual true reward fight pl- reward flight pl- pricing yeah, tongue tied there hey patrick it's mark i can uh, take that one so we've got a lot of questions about sydney uh, good question, because it's obviously Australia in general is a particularly important region for us. A lot of people don't know we were the largest North American carrier to Australia prior to COVID. So uh, we look at those flights very carefully, Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney and, and Auckland, I guess, as well. Um, here's the situation. Australia has one of the strictest travel regimes on Earth and Canada has one of the you know strictest travel regimes on Earth. Canada is completely closed to any foreigners coming in and tries to do all it, all it, all it can to dissuade Canadians from leaving. And Australia um, has many limitations as to who can fly, how many passengers can be on a plane, so much so that Qantas, the Australian airline, completely shut down their international network. I think it's been um, since April or May, they haven't flown a single international flight. That's right. Uh, so I, what I what I what I just ask everyone for is a lot of patience on Sydney because um, our pricing reflects um, a real doubt as to whether we'll even be able to operate those flights over the course of most of next year. So if you look at what we have on offer for both revenue tickets, mind you, where we're treating points the same as dollars, we're not uh, discriminating at all. If you look at what we have ha- have on offer for dollars and for points towards the very end of um, you know next year, and certainly when we roll into 2021, you'll see this for 2022 flying. Um, you know, I, it, it looks different, and the and the you know the options that are available to customers are different from what you'll see if you, for example, look at the flights during June and July and August. So uh, don't worry about Australia. I don't think there's any reason to have any concern other than COVID and the situation that we're in with COVID. It's, it's really interesting because a lot of customers assume COVID means lower prices and flights that are wide open. But actually, there's some cases where COVID has the opposite effect, uh, removing so much capacity or creating doubt as to an airline's ability to fly to a destination. So as uh, 2021 plays out, and we have more information. We'll certainly update those Australia flights uh, to reflect, um, you know, the appropriate position. Okay, so so basically, it's right now. It, there's this. It's just the government's trying to discourage that travel, and it's kind of being reflected in in your guys' pricing, from the way I understand it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to to be more blunt about it, we don't know if we'll even be able to fly those flights. So yeah. we're certainly not um, aggressively promoting them. Um, you know, whether whether it is in dollars or points. And if you look to buy a ticket. Um, you know, you'll find, um, you know, uh, prices that are on the higher side, just as you're observing 
uh, with points because the two things are related, right? Um, they're very much related in the new program. Great. I think, you know, from my end, that that's all the questions I have for our podcast because we do like to keep it uh, in a, a relatively short time length. We're at just over half an hour, I believe, right now. Um, but is there anything else you guys would like to add before before I end this? And not, not from me. Thanks uh, for the opportunity to chat and look forward. Uh, maybe we could uh, get back together uh, once some of these new announcements come in. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll like uh, you'll like what we have uh, planned. Yeah, I, I would I would say, you know, just thanks to you and thanks to everyone who's listening for their enthusiasm about the new program. Um, and, uh, you know, re- rest assured, uh, there is a team of people behind the scenes who are uh, really doing their best to, to bring a lot of great new experiences uh, with Aeroplan to life. Um, and, uh, and Mark is our task, uh, task master and, uh, he will, he will keep us honest on those for sure. So, um, we, we look forward to, yeah, to Mark's point, uh, maybe having the opportunity to come back and talk about, uh, some of the finer details of, uh, of the things that we have ahead of us in 2021. That sounds great. We definitely love to have you guys back on. Um, thank you so much. Happy holidays to the both of you. May you guys have a great Christmas, a uh, very happy new year. And to our readers, our listeners, I should say, because we're, we're live here on our podcast, um, happy holidays to you guys. All the best uh, during this uh, last few weeks of 2020, and we'll talk to you in 2021. <laughs>